The late and great George Michael was not only one of the most popular artists of the late 20th century, he was also a pop culture icon. While he largely disappeared from the public eye before his unexpected death on Christmas 2016, he reportedly passed away peacefully at his longtime cottage in the village of Goring on Thames in England. This was just one of George's many luxury homes. He also maintained a North London mansion sold for about 19 million pounds to a fan, and he also had a glassy contemporary abode in the Palm Beach neighborhood of Sydney, Australia. Today, we'll check out some of the properties George Michael used to own. We even found the listings. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. George Michael was an English singer, songwriter, and recording producer known as a leading creative force in the industry and a pop culture icon. He rose to fame as a member of the music duo Wham. Who doesn't love Last Christmas? And then he went on to embark on his solo career, which was also successful. George was an active LGBT rights campaigner throughout his life as well, but sadly in 2016, the icon passed away at only age 53. At the time of his death, he had sold over 115 million records worldwide, and his net worth was at least $120 million. But it could have been as high as $200 million. Hey everyone, I'm Kara the Vampire Slayer bringing you another exclusive house tour here on Famous Entertainment. This one, checking out the several luxury properties that the late and great George Michael called home. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and ring that bell for notifications because we post brand new videos daily. As always, you can follow me on Instagram to chat and now let's get into this video. A few years back, a stunning California mansion once owned by George came up on the market for about $5.9 million. The late singer purchased the snowflake-shaped contemporary abode back in 1989 and sold it in 1996 for $2 million. Located in the rugged and upscale area of Cielito in Santa Barbara, California, this served as one of George's properties on the West Coast. The mid-century modern home was designed and built by architect Cliff Hickman in 1985 and had influences of Frank Lloyd Wright in the design such as the low-pitched roofs and overhanging eaves. The house was also hexagonal in shape and spanned 4,840 square feet of space inside, while the grounds encompassed 5.71 acres. It was about 15 minutes from the downtown area of Santa Barbara, but completely secluded and peaceful. In fact, it's reported deer often visit the property, and there are two small holes kept in the fence to allow the furry friends to pass through from north to south. George's former estate featured five spacious bedrooms and six bathrooms across two floors, as well as an additional one bed and one bath guest house. The great room on the second floor of the main home was stunning and offered panoramic views out to Santa Barbara through the walls of glass. Also on the upper floor, the living space's central chimney was a focal point of the room as well as offering a fireplace to cozy up to. Glass doors in the common area opened up to a wraparound terrace overlooking the Pacific Ocean and surrounding hills. Inside the unique hexagonal shape of the home divided the space with a dining area and kitchen, which was set up with state-of-the-art appliances as well as timber cabinets and granite counters. There was also a staircase nearby leading to the lower level of the home. Downstairs, you'll find four bedrooms alongside George's former master suite and dressing room. One of the bedrooms boasted large windows looking out to Santa Barbara views, and there was also an office with more windows and plenty of storage space. The guest house was linked to the garage and nearby the spot, the property. Not to mention George's former property boasted a lighted tennis court with built-in stadium-style stone seating, as well as a tennis house with kitchenette and bathroom. Also on the grounds of the mansion, you'll find a private pool, sauna, five-car garage, and plenty of extra room for parking. A former owner of the property explained that the estate actually had 25 parking spots with the help of a valet, making it perfect for entertaining guests. In 2019, it was reported that George's home in Goring on Thames, Oxfordshire, sold for 3.4 million pounds. Also known as Mill Cottage, this is where the singer passed away on Christmas Day in 2016 and it since became a popular spot for fans to pay tribute to him, at one point even wanting to turn it into a museum dedicated to George's legacy. 
However, documents show a couple purchased this estate and moved in. Now, George purchased the property around 1999 for 1.45 million pounds, even inviting Oprah in at one point for a tour. He explained, This is a 16th century house that I bought about three years ago and did it myself. Of course, it's a really low ceiling because people were so short in those days. This is about as English and historical as you can get. We kept all the original beams. This fireplace is the original fireplace. The Riverfront Estate was a charming cottage about an hour's drive from central London and tucked down a lane in the center of the village. It was anchored by a house dating back to the 16th century, as well as numerous fireplaces throughout. Where the main living room was, there was also a cozy reading nook where George used to relax and work on the computer by the fireplace. There is a country style kitchen with more wood beam ceilings, stainless steel appliances and work island in the center. It was a modern kitchen but still had vintage touches like an AGA cooker which George explained was essential to any British or old fashioned kitchen. Another room that George was proud of was the library. The wood paneled library wasn't there when he purchased the place but as George explained he thought every abode should have one. The space was full of antique books that he claimed to have bought in bulk for the most part, not ones he was actually reading. The grounds of George's former cottage were full of manicured gardens alongside St. Thomas of Canterbury, a beautiful 10th century church, and elsewhere there was a swimming pool and pool house set a bit further away from the main house. When he wasn't at his riverside cottage, George had a Georgian style home in the Highgate area of North London on a celeb filled street. Some of the other homes on the block are owned by Sting, Jude Law, Jamie Oliver and supermodel Kate Moss just to name a few. George purchased the semi-detached home back in 2002 off of fellow musician Annie Lennox for £7.65 million and spent many of his reclusive years here. The residence was built around 1688 and offered three levels along with a basement while it was rebuilt in the 1930s and upgraded since. After George died, fans created a shrine on a patch of grass across from the home that was removed in 2018. In 2020, it was reported that a George Michael fan paid a whopping £19 million for the late singer's home and couldn't wait to move into the seven-bedroom abode with his family. Stephen Cameron, the new owner, explained, It's a beautiful property, stunning, and I'm looking forward to living there. I'm also a huge George Michael fan, so that makes it even better. The Grade 2 listed home was also known as The Grove and was formerly rented to celebrities for £15,000 per week. One agent said the home was unusually modern inside for the street, offering a new kitchen, bathrooms and a well-maintained garden with views of Hampstead Heath. Most recently, in 2010, George also went down under and acquired a property all the way in Australia after he had a string of tour dates there. He shelled out $5.8 million for a glass-filled contemporary abode in the upscale Palm Beach neighborhood located in Sydney, Australia. The Clean Line contemporary abode was nestled on a bluff right above the South Pacific Ocean and it was made up of two two-story pavilions separated by a wind-protected courtyard and a glass wall corridor. George's former property measured in at around 3,500 square feet with five beds, a five full baths, and two half baths. Not to mention each of the bedrooms had access to the exterior and their own private ensuite. The abode maximized the amazing views of the Tasman Sea with tons of glass walls and sliders leading outside. The front door opened to a long hall leading to the airy, open plan living dining kitchen area which was 40 feet long. The combination living space had soaring ceilings, a fireplace with built-in cabinets and two walls of glass that blended indoors and outdoors. One side opened up to a courtyard while the floor to ceiling glass on the other side opened to a terrace with panoramic ocean views. In the two-story section of the Oceanside home, there's a study with a fireplace as well as a den. Then there's also a large bedroom on this level with two other en-suites upstairs which open to a balcony overlooking the courtyard. Stairs located in the entrance hall of George's former home travel downstairs to the lower level underneath the central living space. Here there was a family room with wet bar and wall of folding glass that opened the entire room to the backyard, along with two more bedrooms with built-in wardrobes. Outside the flat yard boasted an infinity pool and a small patch of grass. George's modern Sydney beach house had popped up in 2015 as a high-end rental and had been seen a couple of times listed since 
with rates starting at $1,400 per night. After looking at a few of the late George Michael's luxury residences, I think that brings us to the end of our house tour. We saw his charming cottage where he spent his final moments, located about an hour from London, his home in Australia, Santa Barbara, and more. Out of his properties, which was your favorite? Would you prefer to live in central London or out on the river like his other historic home? Be sure to let me know your thoughts on George's homes down in the comments. Thanks for watching. Go ahead and follow me over on Instagram to chat, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!